Welcome to our lecture online and here's an example where we deal with an RCL circuit, reactance and impedance, but at this point we're asked to find the resonance frequency. So what does that mean? What does the resonance frequency of an RCL circuit really mean? Well, we'll go through that. Uh, first, let's read some of the questions. They want us to find the resonance frequency. They want us to find the impedance at that frequency. They want us to find the phase angle at that frequency. And they want us to sketch the impedance versus the frequency. All right, so what is the resonance frequency? Well, let me explain. First of all, we have a um, voltage varying source right here. Uh, it varies with an angular frequency of 377 hertz. And if you convert that to the uh, frequency that is equal to omega divided by 2 pi, which is equal to 377 hertz divided by 2 pi, which ends up being 60 hertz. So that's the, um, that's the oscillation frequency of that uh, voltage source. Now let's find, um, at this particular frequency, let's find what the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactance is. So at this frequency, the X sub L would be equal to omega times L, which is equal to 377 hertz times the inductance, which was 1.5 henrys. So let's figure that out. Here's my calculator. So we have a 377 times 1.5. So we get the 565 uh, 0.5 ohms. All right, and then for the X sub C is equal to omega times C, which is equal to 300 and, oh, no, no, that's not correct. It's one over that. Hmm, that would give me definitely the wrong answer. So it's one over omega times C, which is one over 377 hertz times 12 microfarads, that is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. 12 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. And what is that equal to? So we have 377 times 12 e to the 6 minus equals, take the inverse of that, and we get 221 ohms, 221.0 ohms. All right, now, do we really have to do that to solve this problem? Not really, but it helps us understand what's going on. So if I were to draw a phasor diagram now, using this information, what would it look like? So we have an X sub L, which is quite large. We have a resistance, which is relatively much smaller. And now an X sub C, which kind of looks like that. So we have X sub L, we have X sub C, and we have R. Resonance frequency means and of course, before I actually answer that question, if we're going to find the impedance graphically here, notice that we have to subtract X sub C from the X sub L. That leaves us with an X right there. So X, um, and let me give you a little bit more room. So the reactance is simply equal to the uh, difference between the X sub L minus the X sub C, like so. So that would be this amount. And then if we do the vectorial addition of the reactance and the resistance, like so, we can see that this then would be the impedance. So to find the resonance frequency of the circuit, we have to find a way to get rid of the reactance, which means that at the resonance frequency, X sub L equals X sub C. So at the resonance frequency, X sub L equals X sub C. Now, how can I get X sub L to become smaller and X sub C to be become bigger so that they're equal to each other? Well, since the inductor opposes a change in a current, the less frequently the current changes, the less it opposes the current. So that means if I lower the frequency, then X sub L will become a smaller number. For the, res for the capacitor, if the, if the um, current switches very frequently, then the capacitor doesn't get a chance to fill up, and so there's less of a reactance here with the capacitor, or less of opposition to the current flow. But if the current begins to switch slower, so the capacitor has more time to charge up, then the capacitor will begin to push back with a greater amount of force, and so then it will offer up a greater opposition to the current flow, and the X sub C will become larger. So by lowering the frequency, X sub C will become larger, and X sub L will become smaller, and so we're trying to find out what the frequency is where the two will be equal to each other. An easy way to do that is to say, well, since these two have to be equal to each other, let's set them equal to each other and solve for 
f. All right? So since x sub l is omega sub l, we can also, of course, write x sub l is equal to 2 pi f l, and x sub c is equal to 1 over 2 pi f c. So instead of writing omega, we could write 2 pi f. Let's plug that in for this equation right here. So if x sub l equals x sub c, we can then say that 2 pi f l is equal to 1 over 2 pi f c. Then solving that equation for f, we can put the f up here and the 2 by down here and the l down here. So we can say that f squared is equal to 1 over 4 pi squared. And then we have l times c, right? So we multiply this 2 pi by this 2 pi, we get 4 pi squared. We put the L down here, and we bring the F up here, we get F squared. Now we're taking the square root of both sides. We have F is equal to uh, 1 over the square root of 4 pi squared is 2 pi times the square root of L times C. Now plug it in the values that we have. That's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of L. Now L was 1.5 Henry's, and C was 12 microfarads, so 12 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. All right, so let's see what we get. So 1.5 times um, 12 e to 6 minus equals, take the square root of that, multiply it times 2, multiply it times pi, and then take the inverse, and it's 37.5 hertz. So what that means is when the voltage varying source varies at a frequency of 60 hertz, then we have a much stronger inductive reactance and a much weaker capacitor reactance. And so that's not um, our resonance frequency. But if we lower the frequency to 37.5 hertz, then the X sub L, the inductive reactance, will equal the X sub C. And when you add them together, it will cancel out. And then what happens? Okay, let's find out what is the impedance at F sub naught. So what happens then is that we'll have the same value for X sub L and X sub C. So this will be X sub L, this will be X sub C, this will be my R. And if they're equal to each other and add them together, then I end up with uh, X equaling zero. And that means that R will then be equal to the impedance. So what that means is at the frequency, at the resonance frequency, and Let's put a little sub not there that indicates resonance frequency. At that point, we know that the impedance is simply equal to the resistance. What is the phase angle? Well, if R is equal to Z, then there is no phase angle. The phase angle is zero. So the phase angle equals zero. And finally, if we're going to sketch a graph or sketch something that shows the impedance versus the frequency, what that means, is, here we go. Here we have the impedance. Here we have the frequency. If we had that re resonance frequency, if F equals F sub naught, which in this case is 37.5 hertz, that means that the impedance is as low as it can get, then that will be equal to the resistance right there. If the, if the frequency gets smaller, that means that the um, capacitor will become a much bigger play in the circuit, and then the capacitor reactance goes up, so the total impedance goes up. And if the frequency gets larger, then the Capacity, the inductor becomes much more of a part in the circuit, and the, the inductive reactance goes up, and so the impedance goes up as well. So what that means is at the point where the frequency equals the resonance frequency, when Z becomes equal to R, then the overall impedance of the circuit is the smallest it can be, and that's what we mean by a resonance circuit, or a resonance frequency, and it looks like I have an E missing here. All right, that is how you do a problem like this. So again, to recap, if you want to find the resonance frequency, you set the X sub L equal to X sub C, like this, solve for F, and that's the resonance frequency. All right, good luck with that.